Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. The other day I was out doing just a little bit of shopping, some vlogging, went to the botanicals, then went out, went by my local Home Depot, and uh-oh, what did they have? What happened? They had some really cute little fiddles. And when I say cute, I mean adorable. The Little Fiddle Ficus, Ficus Lorata Little Fiddle is the name of this one. I have one that I got a few months ago. I wanted to do a spotlight on it and I was kind of waiting till I'd had it for like three or four months to just, just kind of see how it does and be able to offer a little bit more commentary on it. Little Fiddle Ficus has been around for a while, but they're just more recently becoming easier to find at the local nurseries and now at the big box stores. It wasn't until I would say last fall probably that I actually started to see them in the local nurseries in larger pots, standardized ones, and just the regulars. This is just a little regular one. It's tiny, little baby, you can see. Not much to it. It's at a good size right now to be a tabletop plant. The standard over the last few decades with the ficus dorata has been to just get these plants that have these gigantic leaves on them and they get very large which is one of the things that's most appealing about them right you have these jungle-like trees in your house thing that's the most appealing about the little fiddle is this tiny foliage i mean it's not tiny it's still rather large foliage but in comparison to the regular ficus larata this is going to be a much more manageable plant to have around the house while these plants are younger the foliage is going to have a little bit more pliability to it a little bit more flex not a lot it still has very stiff foliage but when they get bigger, the foliage does become much more firm and kind of cup-like, sort of, in comparison to just a regular Lyrata. Lyrata, Lyrata, I feel like I said that really weird. And just like with the regular fiddle leaf fig, all you need to do is prune this. You can keep it to whatever size you really want it to. I mean, eventually it's going to need to come out of being in a tiny little pot like this of course but when they get too big for your liking you can just go in make your cuts and that will help encourage more bushy growth from down below and up along the stems and keep it a little bit more maintainable and manageable care for the little fiddle is pretty much identical to that of the regular ficus dorata extremely bright indirect light as much of it as you can give to the plant water them when the top inch or so of soil starts to dry with the lyratas if it is indoors and it's like chilly winter time sometimes i'll go ahead and let it dry out more than that the cooler it is the more dry it's better to go and the more warm your conditions are the more sun they're getting then the more water you're going to need to give them and then during the active growing season i fertilize them about once a month with a quarter strength fertilizer just a general all-purpose mix it doesn't have to be anything really fancy or special for them i have however noticed that they do like the seaweed fertilizers a lot that helps a lot with the foliage keeping it nice and green healthy roots and all that fun stuff but during the winter when i have this plant inside I don't really plan on fertilizing it there's not really much of a reason to that can encourage really stretched out leggy growth and it overall just not necessarily great for the plant because you're giving it a fertilizer that's telling the plant okay grow when the light and the growing conditions aren't doing the same thing if I do leave this plant out here for the winter time then I will be fertilizing it it's warm out here generally between 75 and 84 somewhere in there so it'll be growing actively as the one that I have inside my house it's in a window that's kind of draft a little bit on the chilly side and I'm not fertilizing it I've barely even watered that plant because it doesn't need it it's going to be better on the dry side when temperatures are cool as opposed to being wet it wouldn't work out very well for that plant I'm not saying don't water the plant but I actually in that scenario I've had that one for I'd say about four months now and I water it about I don't know maybe every two and a half weeks I'll give it a good watering, let the water come out the bottom of that pot, but that's been pretty much it. I'm just letting that one chill, which is very much the same for any ficus lorata, whether it's the little fiddle or the regular, that's how I treat them all. I have a larger ficus lorata that's on the outside of the grow area where temperatures are really cool, and it's just chilling. It's just hanging out. I'm not doing anything with that plant, and it seems to appreciate that. And while these are plants that can be finicky and throw a fit sometimes, usually there's a reason for it sometimes you may notice that these will get some sort of splotching in the foliage like red sort of blemishes in there that's from too much fertilizer 
usually. There are also like some rusty type funguses that can cause that. Brown edges on the outside is not enough water or too low of humidity. Yellowing foliage is typically too much water. It can also be fungal, but the best thing to do is just see if is the plant wet. Have you been watering it a lot? Then that's probably just too much water. You just cut back on the watering, let it dry out a little bit more. It's a pretty easy fix there. And then repot them at the beginning of the active growing season. So I will be repotting this one and my larger one that's in the house. I'll do that in my area, I would say probably around early May. Repotting when the plants aren't in their active growth season, that can just basically lead to water sitting around and all that new soil and then the roots not really having the stamina to grow out and reach into that fresh soil to get that water. It can just make things a little bit more risky in the sense that you might be watering the plant plenty, but it just isn't getting that water. Just because the roots haven't expanded out into that new soil that would be on the outside. Hopefully it wouldn't be it too much new soil. You know, you only want to go about an inch to two inches on the outside diameter. That's all you need to do. I'd say every other year, depending on how fast yours is growing. Typical household conditions, the ficus lorata doesn't grow incredibly quickly. If you move your plants outside during the growing season, then they're going to grow fairly fast. Or maybe you have a sunroom or it's just really warm. Maybe you just have like a super incredible green thumb. Then you would need to repot it more often. You get what I'm saying here. You start to see roots coming out the surface and then out of the bottom of the pot, which this one doesn't have a hole. I need to fix that. Never grow a ficus florata in a pot that doesn't have a drainage hole. It's a bad, bad, bad idea. It's just going to lead to problems. This is just a white decorative pot. It comes with all the plants in the trending tropical selections from Costa Farms. That lifts right out of there for watering. I do have to get my fingers down in there and then you get the dirt under your nails. That's a little bit annoying, but it's not that big of a deal. Any, any of other plant nerds out there, y'all know, like, we don't really care. It's just dirt. It's not a big deal. Costa Farms has been using coconut core in a lot of their potting mixes. Actually, maybe all of them for a few years now, which is fantastic. It's more sustainable than peat, better for the environment. It repels water, though, which peat does also. There's not a big difference there. But because of that, with this being slightly overpotted, I have found that it's a little bit tricky to water this particular one. I have to make like a little bit of a finger dam here to hold the water in. Not that big of a deal. It's just watering a house plant. You just want to make sure that that soil, that mix becomes fully saturated until it runs out the bottom of the pot. I will not put this back into its white pot that doesn't have a hole in the bottom until that is completely stopped dripping water. And with this being a coconut based mix, I mean, I do the same thing with any dry peat based mix. I'm going to want to water this in a manner where it's going to rush out the bottom. I'll wait a few seconds for it to stop and then I'll water again. I'll usually do that about three times. The only reason that I do that is just for a little bit of an extra assurance that all of the potting mix down in here has been saturated and got some water in it and there aren't going to be any dry patches or bubbles or anything like that. That's just because this one was basically bone dry. See so yeah, how when I lifted that it let some air into the jar and a little bit more water is going to come out. So I'm going to let that keep chilling here for a minute and we'll come right back. And the ficus lorata doesn't want to be sopping wet anyways. That tends to kind of tick them off a little bit. Evenly moist soils, not the same thing as being wet and soggy. That's a whole different thing. That would not be good for them. Wouldn't like it. I went over the care just in case somebody wanted this plant and didn't know anything about the regular ficus lorata, the regular fiddle leaf fig, but the care is pretty much going to be the same. The little fiddle, the foliage is closer together than it is on a regular ficus lorata, which could potentially mean it's a little bit more difficult to keep the foliage clean. You want to make sure to wipe the foliage down on your plants, probably monthly. I get kind of bad about that sometimes, but it is really important to do that in order for chlorophyll to get through to everything. You don't, if a layer of dust is on there, then they're not going to photosynthesize as much as they potentially could, or even at all, if the dust gets too thick. They also come in standardized form, which I actually prefer on the little fiddle. With the regular ficus lorata, I don't like them standardized, but with the little fiddle, for some reason, I prefer it standardized. With the ones that I have, my regular fiddly fig is standardized, which I wish it wasn't, and then my little fiddles aren't, which I wish they were. That, that's just, you can't, hey, you can't have it all, right? That's okay. I'll put some pictures up here on the screen. When the little fiddle is standardized, it's just a really cute plant. With the leaves being compact and uh, closer together along the stems, it just looks really nice and tidy and cute, which is one of the things I like about them. And I think that's why I don't necessarily like the standardized regular fiddly fig, because I sort of want it to be all jungly and long grown out branches. When they're standardized, you can only let those branches grow out so much in between getting that trunk to thicken out. Like you have to keep things proportionate in order to keep the plant from just falling apart. <laughs> when you put the little fiddle onto a little trunk, 
it's just the cutest darn thing. I think it's nice how it has the big bold foliage in appearance that makes you think tropical plant, but with the compact foliage, there's still a tidiness to it that makes it look really clean and sharp in the house and more formal. You really just get the best of both worlds with the little fiddle when it's standardized. When it's not standardized, it's just, I mean, it's a nice looking plant, but it's going to look just like any other Ficus florata, but with smaller foliage and the leaves are meet closer together. And how often or how long I should say, do you think you could keep a regular fiddle leaf fig sitting on your desk? Not for very long. And I, would you want to with the giant foliage that's on a regular fiddle leaf fig, even if it's a small little starter plant, the leaves are still really big and get in the way of everything but you don't get that with the little fiddle. It just kind of stays in its place and looks cute. Oh, and if you didn't know, they are toxic. Ficus loretta, toxic, keep it away from pets and just curious mouths in general. The sap can be irritating to the skin. I've never had issues with it, but it's something to watch out for. I thought I should throw that out there just in case, just to be safe, because that is one thing with this being a smaller, more compact plant. I do feel that it's probably going to be more likely to be more accessible to, again, curious mouths, whether it's dogs, cats, children, adult, I don't know, you know, I don't know the situations in your home, but like I said, curious mouths, keep it away from them. And they tend to have more foliage on them than you will have with the regular fiddle leaf fig, so they're going to be more prone to drop leaves. Sometimes that's just part of a plant growing. The ficus loratas, whether it's the little fiddle or the regular, they will hold on to their foliage for a while, but when you start to lose it down here along the stems, it's okay. But with this, there's more leaves to come off because they have more foliage on them than a regular fiddle leaf fig does. Especially when they're smaller and they have these more fine stems on them, I can see my cats looking at that and thinking, hey, that looks like it might be fun to chew on. Okay, that'll do it. The little fiddle fig. Isn't it cute? I'm pretty excited about this trending tropicals collection that Costa Farms has done here. They're taking plants that have been really overpriced and uh, that have been more difficult to get on the market, not necessarily because they're harder to grow. I'm, I'm gonna, there's gonna be a whole entire conversation about all of that in the vlog that comes out after this video, but I'm enjoying going around and seeing that it's not, the little fiddle's not the hardest to find. They have some pretty interesting plants in this collection. I'll be doing a separate video on that collection, hopefully in the next week or two. But since I had my bigger little fiddle in the house, that was hard to say. I wanted to go ahead and just do a spotlight on it so I could talk about the two. I was going to repot my other one in this video and I decided that since I'm keeping it in the house, it's really just not at the appropriate time to repot it. So I'll do that in the springtime. Comment down below, say hi, I love talking to everybody. What do you have to offer about the little fiddle fig or your big ficus florata fiddle leaf fig? It's difficult to say little fiddle fig. I uh, cannot even tell you how many takes I had to do in this video just because for some reason it just doesn't flow off my tongue even though I think it really should. I don't know, my brain and mouth just don't like putting that together and then bouncing back between just fiddle leaf fig and little fiddle fig. It was tricky. Tips, tricks, suggestions, anything and all, always appreciated. I have all my social media posted down below. I use Instagram way more than anything else. I hope everybody's having a great day and a great life and everything's going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.